world and in the English Premier League, another very good one for Arsenal out there as they slumped uh, to a draw. And of course, uh, Manchester United got a dinded victory while Liverpool also uh, were on fire, not forgetting uh, Chelsea, who also had got the job done in their game. And in the Spanish La Liga, the El Clasico really lived up to billion without those two players uh, that we've always known to always be the major actors. Uh, but it was uh, Barcelona who got the job done, taking uh, the opponent, talking about Real Madrid, to the cleaners in one very, very exciting game. One game uh, that most fans uh, of the Estadio Santiago Bernabéu outfit will not forget. We welcome to, uh, to the Monday's edition of the Super Don Sport. And it is a very wet Monday morning. We're really very glad once again to come your way and, of course, take you around the ever-blazing world of sport. My name is Paul Lakmule Philip. Uh, this morning, we're not just looking at uh, talking about football alone, we also uh, dash uh, to uh, the world of tennis where we'll be looking at the Singapore Open. Uh, we're seeing uh, some wins, some of the big players are registering wins out there, and also uh, Roger Federer also claiming another ATP title. Uh, when will this guy actually stop? Uh, at some point in time, some of us felt, uh, you know, he has actually reached his pinnacle, and of course, uh, he should be quitting uh, tennis, but he's really back and, of course, firing on all cylinders. I'm not in the studio alone. I've got Dr. Magubi Adi joining me on the show this morning. Good morning, Dr. Uh, good morning, Kule. Like you said the other time, it was indeed a fantastic time during the weekend. We saw a whole lot of footballing activities, talking about tennis and Roger Federer winning his 99th ATP title. That was indeed a very fantastic one. Actually, all of these actually made my weekend because I saw some of the games and it was indeed credible. All right, it was indeed credible. Someone tweeted when uh, Real Madrid were losing uh, by four goes to five goes to one. The person actually said, and at that particular point in time, uh, Juventus were leading Empoli uh, by two goes to one. Cristiano Ronaldo back at two goals, and he said, perhaps if Ronaldo had been in the colors of Real Madrid, the scoreline would have been uh, five three. But it was indeed a very very great and a wonderful weekend of football. Let's start uh, from the news concerning uh, the Super Sun Eagles. The draws for the African uh, as far as uh, uh, um, beach uh, tournament is concerned as is out and really Nigeria will be facing Senegal, Libya, Tanzania uh, in uh, their group talking about uh, group B and in group A. Egypt uh, will take on Morocco, Cote d'Ivoire and Madagascar. When it comes to a uh, beach tournament, you can really count on, this, on, on the beach eagles. Uh, but of course, they really have an uphill task against Senegal. Dotun, the Senegalese are always they hard not to crack uh, any day, any time when, when you talk about beach competition in Africa. Of course, they are, they are one among the best when it comes to beach or soccer tournament. And the, if you can remember, uh, just a couple of years back, they came here to Nigeria to give Nigeria a good run for our morning here in Lagos uh, during the Copa uh, uh, Beach Town. I mean, uh, yeah, Copa we did the Lagos. Yeah, of course. So uh, we, we are still expecting such a thing. And if you look at the seeding in that particular group, uh, Senegal had the seeding ahead of Nigeria. Unlike what we do see initially, whereby Nigeria we actually take the seed on the, in a group and all that we follow. But I, I know too well that it's really going to be pretty, pretty tough for Nigeria, but I think they can actually navigate their way from that group and even go ahead and win the tournament with Madagascar, with uh, Libya, Senegal, Tanzania. and Tanzania uh, in that group. We can navigate our way against them, Senegal, Libya, and uh, Tanzania. And All right, Dotun Dot Dot Group, group A, Egypt, uh, Morocco, Cote d'Ivoire, and Madagascar. Uh, if you look at uh, the group, I think uh, the Egyptians stand above others when it comes to, uh, you know, uh, and also, also forgetting the Ivorians. Yeah, but they, go, go, going by what we've seen in the past years when it comes to beach tournaments, you are really going to give it to the Moroccans as well, give it to the uh, but, uh, Egyptians. But one thing is... Uh, the Ivorians have be, also been uh, coming course, up. They are then. coming up, but they are not a match to all these teams when it comes to playing beach tournaments. But if, if it is normal soccer football on the field of play, you are really going to give the Ivorian uh, an, an equal chance with all that. Uh, but I don't, I'm not taking anything away from them. Though they came here in Nigeria three years ago, they gave us a good run for, their, for our money. But I, I still think that they have something they can actually offer when it comes to playing. So which, of the, which two teams do you tip to qualify from? I, I, um, I think it's going to be the two North African sides, talking about Morocco and Egypt. And in the Nigerian group? I think Nigeria number one, then followed by Senegal. 
that. Okay. that Nigeria two, number one, Senegal number two. Uh, two of West African countries qualifying from that. Okay, game. so who, who, who wins the tournament at the end? I think Nigeria can still go all the way to the final, even if I thought they are not going to win it, at least they can get to the final. All right, uh, we hope the Beach Eagles can get uh, to the final. At the point in time when we started, I was like, like um, no other country in Africa will be able to match us, but they've really uh, come, uh, they've really been uh, coming up and they've been getting good results against and Nigeria. We hope that this particular tournament at the Beach Eagles will go all the way and, of course, win the tournament. Let's switch attention to this one. Not really good uh, for Nigeria at all. The amputee team, despite all the travels they went through, uh, trying to race one before, uh, they were able to make it to the tournament. Lost in their first game to Brazil uh, by six goes to one. Dotum. Was it the kind of result you, you, you expected? Oh, no, no, no. We never envisaged so, uh, such a result. But if you look at the Amputee for Football World Cup, you're really going to give it to Brazil. They've been the best team since uh, they've started. They are normally tear everything apart. And doing this to Nigeria, I'm not, see, I'm not so surprised. But this, this we do will be a, a good learning ground for these guys, owing to the fact that uh, leaving the shores of this country and going down to Mexico to, for the tournament, uh, like you said the other time, uh, their travel, their pain, their everything they went through to get money before people actually started coming to their rescue, uh, talking about the presidential aspirant, uh, Atiku, the NFF president, the NFF president. and Mikel Lobi and some other and corporate, Nigeria, uh, corporate organization in Nigeria that actually come to their head to make sure these guys actually find their way down uh, to Mexico and get it to Mexico and getting the batching of their life uh, I would say is a Real very good, yeah, yeah, yes, it's a good experience but they still have this that is really working in, uh, for good for them what is really working good for them they are still going to play Russia I think they can actually have it good against Russia and they are going to play El Salvador. So playing against a team like El Salvador actually put them in a very good position so we can see that they can actually have a point or three against uh, a team like that but against Russia. Russia they have been a team that has been going to the, Rush, uh, to the World, World Cup. Cup so they have all of the experience but I just think that this will actually play a very huge uh, are part in them becoming one among the airlines when it comes to uh, amputee World Cup. So let them go learn this year. Then when next they will be going, I think they will be going uh, as a team that have actually learned their lesson and coming to re right their wrong. All right, coming to rewrite your wrong. I listened to the captain of the team. I actually spoke before that first game, the game they lost uh, against uh, the Brazilians, that they have what it takes uh, to get that needed result against them. But this didn't happen. Uh, but we hope in their next game against Russia and um, Salvador, uh, we hope they get the needed result. You can compare the pedigree of uh, Nigerian football uh, with that of Salvador. But the Russians, uh, for sure, will really give them a good run for their money. We wish them uh, the very best. We hope that they will not be complacent by virtue of that loss uh, they suffer against uh, the Brazilians. Let's pay attention to the Chinese League right now. The Super Eagles captain, John Mikel Obi, was on the scorer's chart uh, in the team's uh, defeat uh, over the weekend. Uh, you know, when John Mikel Obi scores, there seems to be the news tends to always make round. <laughs> no, no, no. Well, I, 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 I do tell people, uh, somebody like uh, Wifred in Didi, Wifred in Didi in English Premier League, he also scored during the weekend, but you're actually going to say that Wifred in Didi, fantastic player, he has the energy to bump forward, he has everything working for him good, but somebody like Mikel Obi, Mikel Obi that doesn't have the energy and the pace to bump forward, playing in the deep line and um, male feet, but when Mikel Obi is given the opportunity to venture forward, playing as a second striker or playing as a central and midfield, you get the scoring outside of Mikel. Scoring side of Mikel has always been there. But, oh, but we don't often get the scoring side of Mikel owing for the fact that Mikel do play deep line midfield. When he was in Chelsea, he always be the last man among the midfielders. Mm -hmm. When he was playing for Nigeria at the time, he is always the last man among the midfielders. He only has the ability to take the pace of the play from the deep line midfield and to make sure that his team actually uh, is well coordinated and they have a good share of possession. But giving him the privilege to bump forward to go actually do the job, you will actually going to get the best of Mikel on way. If you can remember, during the uh, Confederation Cup 2013, Mikel Obi was indeed a master class. Remember the goal he scored against Uruguay. He even scored with his weak foot, talking about his yeah. leg, uh, leg. I uh, remember that it was, so, a, it was a sumptuous so, goal. And Mikel Obi has this ability, he's always calm in front of goal. 
unlike every other midfielder or players in front of goal, you see this instantage and you see this thing, they uh, tend to miss chances. But when Mikel Obi is being given the privilege to be at, at remember the goal he scored against Algeria also. He was so calm. He was not, he was not, he was, he was not so naive so, uh, to the extent that he, uh, strikers throw away such chances. Mm. But he was so calm to actually convert it. So when you give the Mikel Obi the opportunity to play the advanced role, you are definitely going to get goals from Mikel Obi. This is the second goal this season. Though somebody like Audi and Judy Gallo have scored 20 already. But uh, Mikel Obi being a midfielder and the captain of this and at the time he was injured. Mm. Uh, why I'm actually happy for the, the fact that you he know, scored. You know, I wish I wish Prince Will Oviesa is here. No, no, I'm, I'm sure he will have said some things. Uh, there seems you seem to have this passion for uh, John <laughs> Mikel Obi. No, 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 and then uh, you were really talking no, no, Mikel Obi has the quality. Mm. Mikel, he, he, recently, uh, uh, one among the players of Nigerian national team in person of uh, Willie, uh, William Twift Econ said that Mikel Obi is wasting his talent in Chinese league, that he needs to come to Italian league, that Mikel Obi will be a, a good fit All for right, Italian but, so, but let me quickly so, say this. Let me quickly say it this. wasn't just wow. Mikel that scored uh, yes, uh, over the weekend. Of course. Um, we um, said indeed he did also, well, also and scored. Some other couple and then, of players you know, actually did. He, he but what I'm actually charged in accolades on Mikel Obi is the fact that I'm happy that he will be back for the Nigerian game against South Africa. Wilfred Ndidi will not be there. And Nigeria needs a balance. The energy and pace and power of Wilfred Ndidi will be missed. But we, uh, we, Nigeria needs the, the, the balanced play of Mikel Obi to make right. sure that they win that particular one and qualify for the African Cup of Nigeria. All right, Dr. Steven Ode in the Swiss League. He can't just stop scoring. Score over the weekend. Of know. course, the guy cannot stop scoring. We know when he got there at first, it was very, very difficult, difficult. for him to acclimatize, to actually settle down and do all the things. But since he has settled down, he has been fantastic. He has been scoring week in, week out, and that has been very good. Do you think good. he deserves a call up to this national team? Uh, no, no, you, one, uh, 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 national team football is quite different from, from uh, top regular football. football. Mm. So, so uh, he may be given an opportunity, uh, and he, he makes the opportunity up. Just let him actually keep doing what he's doing right. And at the time, he's going to actually get to the point that we all can see that this guy needs to be part of the Nigerian national team. Uh, this guy that plays used to get in the Turkish league, talking about uh, Ekwema, who plays used to get with um, Apoy Besheva, where uh, uh, John Ugo plays used to get. When he was given the privilege to come play for Nigerian national team, we saw how he did mess up. You said yourself that you will never give him an opportunity again. Yes. But that is how it is. But in the, in the color of his club, he kept bagging goals. So you cannot just take it away from him. For Steven Ode, I just need to, I just want him to keep uh, growing, yeah. growing, making the card. So it will get to his day that everyone across the world that are Nigerians can see that this guy is good enough for, for the this. Nigerian national good. team. All right, we'll wait to see how things are will pan out. We have to leave football right now. We'll still come back to our football later, but we want to talk tennis. Roger Federer was in imperial form uh, in the Basel Open as he claimed his 99th ATP title Dotum. I think <laughs> well, I if, you're talking, if you're talking about one particular tennis player that's given me a lot of surprises. No, no, uh, I'm asking you a question. Who else can do this? Ah, uh, it has to be the Fed Express. It has to be the Roger uh, Federer himself. He has been a fantastic tennis player. I understand the talent of play. I understand. Even when he was getting old, at the time he was not getting any, any title. And people across the world are saying it is guy time for him to call it quit. And he said to the world at large that, no, I still have what it takes to be a winner when it comes to, play, to playing tennis. Winning his 99th ATP title speaks volume of what he has achieved as a, t as a long tennis player in the world. All right. Uh, he has said he's not going to quit. Uh, he wants to continue to win laurels, uh, win ATPs, win uh, Grand Slam titles. But we we'll wait to see because he has a lot of uh, players who are really on his heels. we we'll see how things are pan out with Roger Federer. Still talking tennis right now. The Singapore Open Dot Two. Uh, you now see Tolina actually got the better of Sloane Stevens. And um, I think uh, for me it was a bit of surprise because I thought Stevens. Uh, so uh, Stevens actually have everything to hold with yeah, him against he all, have of counter, all of our counterparts because she has a, uh, uh, someone before her that she can actually take after talking about Serena Williams. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, Serena Williams actually become the big image when it comes to table. Uh, long tennis in the world and this one Stefan Stefan we are talking about she's from America so she has understudied uh, 
uh, Serena Williams. So she, 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 by now, we should be seeing him, uh, seeing her rather as the new Serena Williams of the United States of America. But she's not really putting up that picture we need to be seeing. For, uh, for Elena Sifitolinina, actually, she made, uh, set a record becoming the first Ukrainian to win a major title. Mm. So that was indeed a fantastic one uh, for Elena. Elena winning this one is a very, very big one for her career. So mm. really, this one actually put her uh, among the A-list when it comes to long tennis in the world. So when you are talking about the A-list of guys that are actually doing well week in, week out, month in, month out, year in, year out, when it comes to long tennis, you are really going to make sure Elena Sifitolina. So when you when you look at it very well, you will see that all these guys are fantastic guys. I love long, I love tennis. You know that very well. But I sometimes when you are not seeing those that you love to win titles, win titles, you are really going to be just the way I do always. You know, I'm not always happy uh, when no, Andy Murray. Uh, no, no, uh, you uh, know uh, the you, British finest. You no, know, don't. Uh, some really... will come and say to me that I'm wrong calling this young man. You can't call someone who has won two Grand Slam titles a pretender. Single. Grand Slam title. No, it's okay, a single. Two, 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 two. and Wimbledon Open. You want to take this? You want to take I that away take from him? Away from him. You can't. To the fact that and he has won to what whom, no other tennis player has won. Kule, to yeah. whom much is given, much is expected. That's, that's an issue so for much for, is given to less, less, Andy Murray. Less, so much less, is expected less, of him. Less, 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 away from that. I know you are not a fan of Andy Murray. <laughs> and I will never be. will bounce back. And of course, I come bounce back from the injury and then begin to win. Lawrence and surprise uh, people like <laughs> Dr. Angubadi. Let's switch attention to the English Premier League. Not a very, very good news at all. The news flying in as it that um, Lexus City boss uh, died in an aeroplane, a crash with four others on Saturday. This is really very, very sad. So many players are coming out to tell uh, the world about who this man is. Dr. really very, very sad. It was a shocking, a shocking news, the billionaire has departed mother health. Well, the Thailand billionaire actually, when uh, the team talking about Leicester City won the championship in 2016, it was indeed a surprise. And many among the yeah, are loving we got to show what he has been doing. said that this is indeed a surprise that we get to see things like these ones in 100 years. Mm. And uh, for the Thai billionaire who actually uh, threw his weight behind Leicester City to make sure they become their, uh, what they are now, actually showed who he is made of uh, during the uh, 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 victory year. And this man actually has actually become a picture uh, when it comes to football across the world. Mm -hmm. And it's not a very good news at this point. Though he's a bit old, talking about being over 61. 60. 61 uh, yes, is yes. not all that old. I said just be a bit over 60. Mm. So uh, you can actually say that to a large extent he has enjoyed his money, enjoy everything, enjoy that. I don't but, you, but, but, but I don't know. Don't, don't, like don't, don't, don't get me wrong. Don't get me wrong. Don't get me wrong. This is where I'm going that it's not a good news to football at large and it's not a good news to his family. It's mm. not a good news to the football club is not a good news to the world at large because when we got to meet someone like that who actually understand throwing his word behind the club and making sure that some persons out there smiles every week and he's not just a good but I, what I just uh, praise that uh, God will give the family the fortitude to bear this great loss. All right, we hope and uh, God uh, will give the family the fortitude uh, to bear this irreversible loss. It wasn't just him that was uh, in that helicopter crash. Four other individuals uh, were present and they all uh, died after by virtue of the crash. We hope God Almighty, as I said earlier, will give them uh, the fortitude to bear the loss. Let's look at games that were played uh, over the weekend in the English Premier League. Burnley uh, lost at home to Chelsea by 0 to 4, White Crystal Palace, and at the Arsenal tie ended in a 2 all draw. Manchester City defeated Everton by 2 goals to 1. Uh, Liverpool were 4 1 better uh, than Cardiff City. Leicester City uh, played out a 1 all draw with West Ham United. Brighton also got the better of Wolverhampton at 1 0. It ended. Fulham uh, lost at home at the Quivin Cottage to Bournemouth. Uh, what a surprising result there uh, by 3 goals to nothing. Watford also defeated Huddersfield by 3 goals to nothing. Southampton and the Newcastle tie ended in a goalless draw. The big game for today. Uh, is a Super Monday. It's going to be between Tottenham Hotspur and Manchester City. Dalton Burnley were completely taken to the cleaners by Chelsea. Well, fantastic one for uh, Chelsea Football Club. Uh, they are on the rise. They are doing everything right. They are playing pretty football. Who do, who do you who do you give the credit to? 
Uh, let me say the coach has been fantastic. Mm, the Mario coach Sassari. has been doing everything right. And mm. the guys on the field of play are actually responding to the tactics of the coach. All right. Uh, Crystal Palace, Arsenal were leading uh, Shaka. They were, they were, it was a safe. Fantastic, like, you know, fantastic goal. With goal victory. Fantastic goal from Granit Shaka. Mm. Fantastic uh, football play from Crystal Palace. But South Park has always been a difficult one for Arsenal. Arsenal. Last season, they, they actually went through the high of a needle before they got the 3-2 win they had. Yeah. And this I time had around, victory. Arsenal, they were not just in the party. All right. Many among the big guys in the club actually never show up. And they paid dearly for that. All right. Uh, Jotun, uh, the El Clasico, did you live up to billing as far as you are concerned? Uh, no, no, no. But on my own side, the El Clasico did not lift to billing, owing for the fact that we were expecting that we are Madrid will give a fight, but we are unable to give any fight. It and was a stroll in the park. A stroll in the park for Barcelona mm. Football Club. And uh, uh, Luis Suarez getting his first hat trick in the Air Classico. Wow. Uh, with that mess, we were expecting that it's going to be pretty difficult. And some said that had uh, it been Messi on the field of play, it would have been like 10 0. Ten <laughs> but <laughs> that's what we, we really have, have to go right now. And then uh, for Real Madrid, uh, this is their first um, every defeat uh, in three years. And who else will do it uh, than um, Barcelona? Uh, they've been uh, in the form of their life. And then for Real Madrid, it looks like if they are still missing uh, Cristiano Ronaldo. This is the match that we will be taking on today's edition of Super Don Sport. We want this short break, and when we come back, Vera will join me on set. Do stay tuned. <laughs>